come. This is their fate. All right, all right. Welcome back to the House of Wolves podcast. I am your host, Deontay, with my friends Jalen and Josh. And we got some uh, juicy topics for today. Got some things that's pretty interesting going around in the stratosphere at this point in time. <laughs> A lot of uh, interesting podcast beefs, some uh, Mass Effect Legendary Edition dropping, Apex Season 9, letting us sit with it for a little bit. Uh, we got J. Cole album. We don't usually talk about albums, but I did force them to talk about Big Sean. So let's talk about J. Cole, too. It's probably going to be those three. It's Kendrick, Big Sean, J. Cole. More than likely, I wouldn't talk about anybody else's. But, uh, yeah, that's the topics for today. Um, anything else we want to talk about as well. But those are the ones that I've, I've seen seemed interesting and I wanted to talk about. But, you know, as usual, before we get into the topics and talk about all the bull, um, how y'all fellas doing? How's life? You said talk about school? No, nah, I said talk about the at the usual, like. Stuff oh, we okay, got on okay. at the stuff on docket. Oh, okay. I thought you were trying to be funny. Um, oh, man. No, nah, man. Nah, everything's smooth. I mean, guess what, Ryan? <laughs> Y'all know this, but do the world know this? Man, I'm down my first year of school. I got nothing but time. Oh, yeah. And I yeah. got more time. And oh, did I say I got time? I, mean, I got a whole lot of it. I ain't been doing nothing but chilling. Sleeping the days away. No, I'm just fine. But no, nah, everything's been good, man. I'm. I'm cool. I was working out. People didn't have masks on at the gym and stuff. I was confused, but I mean, oh my god, you know what time it's, it is. just say masks are recommended now. It didn't say required. I was just looking like, bro, what is the world coming to? But I'm like, I guess that's hopefully advancement. But I'm keeping my mask on. So yeah, I would I would do the same. Uh, but yeah, how about you, Josh? How you been doing? Same with me. Done with school, got a lot of free time now, um, which which is nice, and it's weather's getting good, got our vaccines, so, I mean, I, I, I do want to travel more, I feel uh, safer than, you know, last summer, but, you know, still gotta be careful. <laughs> yeah, COVID definitely. vaccine, COVID, COVID vaccine. vaccine. <laughs> Look, I got that up shooting through my veins. That one got me juiced up. <laughs> got me real juiced up. I'm over here dropping out the window. I mean, they, they they could say I'm tweaking, but it ain't. It ain't that. It's just feeling good, feeling blessed, highly favored. And uh, yeah, go get your vaccine if you haven't yet. Come get come get on this. Uh, I don't care about the uh COVID impact right now. This is that. It's that uh, this that this that new sauce, man. I don't know what to tell you. This that. <laughs> yeah, <I laughs> nah, this ain't no. Like, yeah, I know, I know, Jalen. He, he he, a low key <laughs> conspiracy theorist, and he work in the medical field. He be like, man, I ain't taking that garbage. I'm like, come on, man, why not? He, he yeah, supposed to I, debunk I, all I of that. You sit in the crib and don't do nothing. Mm-hmm. Sit from nine to five, looking at people on Zoom. Have zero interaction with people. <laughs> COVID, I'm gonna spawn in my crib. Man, it's a virus. I ain't trying what they to call hear it, Just uh, go ahead and cop, cop. Go ahead and cop. The I virus. get one eventually. I gotta yeah. start doing clinical stuff on June first. So I'll probably get one sooner or later. Mm-hmm. But yeah, so um, everything been smooth with me too. I ain't been, I ain't been doing much. Um. Like I said, I got that vaccine in me going strong still. Um, yeah, life been good, man. Just been playing Apex, chilling, going to work, you know, chilling at the crib. Can't wait to this. Yeah, I mean, it's it's scary that they is taking a mask off. I ain't going to hold you because I don't trust none of these people, to be honest, no more. So the world is, I look at the world very differently than I did before. So, um, what did they say on the news that? Technically, the people who aren't vaccinated are the only ones that's like kind of like SOL in the situation. Um, kind of, but I still at the same time, it's different strains. And obviously that vaccine doesn't, imp- it was fighting the first strain, not the ones that have been popping up in the, like, it's, it ain't nothing but it's another, a difference of like, well, to me, that's how it explained to me is that at least that it's, it's like a strain of the, like a flu, but it's worse. So, um, 
we already got a flu vaccine, so it's, there's no difference. It's a difference. So these other strands that's coming out that could possibly potentially steal, you know, cause harm to people that has the vaccine. So, yeah, that's where I'm at with it. But hopefully ain't everything fine. I don't think they crazy enough to be, I, don't, I ain't crazy enough to be out there just, you know, mask off thinking I'm freed up because I can. I'm, I'm still going to keep, I'm still going to stay masked up all day. That's what I'm going to do. And right, it'll be mask off. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, something like that. Uh, but yeah, man, let's get into these topics. Let's talk about something interesting, fun. Um, let's start with Mass Effect because <laughs> again, I don't know nothing. Of, I ain't never played Mass Effect. I'm, I'm, I'm gonna put a disclaimer right now at the beginning. Never played Mass Effect. Don't have any plans of playing Mass Effect. And um, the little little chance that it almost had of me impulse buying or fear of missing out has has um has um went away. So. I probably have never played that game, but Jalen and Josh really enjoyed those games. Not really, but they enjoyed those games. So we're going to let them talk about it um, and uh, start the podcast off with their, with their what they want to talk about, about Mass Effect. So the floor is yours. Trash effect. Trash effect. <laughs> I mean, you did play uh, some Andromeda, right? Don't start. I ain't play that game, <laughs> man. Yeah, you did, man. I got to the hard. first. I got to the first planet and cut that. Cut that it off. That ain't playing it. I mean, yeah, it's not. But you understand the type of game. You didn't like that game. I mean, none of us liked it. Even though me and Jalen like Mass Effect, we hated Andromeda. Right. But you know, it's in general, it's a space RPG. So you walk around cities talking to people get inside mm. quests, but it's also a third person shooter um i wanted to get it because when they came out it was like one of the first 360 games i had and um it was just fun uh like i didn't i never played a game like that before and it, it, i felt it had a like really good story and characters mm-hmm. so i got the legendary edition which mainly bumps it up to 4k 60 on the new consoles i think it might be like 1440 60 on like the ps4 pro i I don't know the exact numbers but uh mainly just upgraded textures changed a couple little mechanics but it's overall pretty close to the originals um but in my opinion that's that's fine i think a lot of people might be disappointed with the level of upgrade but i think it's pretty decent and it includes all three games with all the dlc so i feel like it's worth it um I've mostly been playing Mass Effect 1 because uh, that's the one that I liked the most because it, it had the most like RPG mechanics. It got like random loot drops with a bunch of mm-hmm. different random weapons and gear and mods. Uh, they removed that stuff and like streamlined it and made it closer to like Gears of War where you're more just, you know, the combat is really good, but the levels are really small. And you're just going through more linear levels. Mm-hmm. Mass Effect 1, you can, like, drop on to random planets and enter dungeons and look around. Uh, so I like that exploration aspect of it. Um, I am more excited to play Mass Effect 2 because that's, I think, the best story overall. Uh, like, that's the one that I looked up. It has a... It got, like, a nine and a half, like, when it came out, like, from IGN and in them because people really love that game. Uh, so they love that and they love loved uncharted 2 which came out the same year so people really like to Jalen might speak more about that one because i think that's the one you you like the most right yeah uh i don't really play i played mass effect one but i only played it i went back and played it afterwards and i remember i felt like the controls was a little weird i hated the body rag dial like i mentioned before um and i remember the driving was kind of weird uh, I mean, it's cool, but like you said, Mass Effect 2, that was definitely my favorite one. That was the one I was introduced to. My uh, one, A good friend of mine actually let me have it because he said he didn't really care for the game that much. So I just played it, and like Josh said, because um, I've seen some of Mass Effect 1, like my older brother had played it because it was like one of the first 360 games. I think it came out like in 2007 or something. So I've seen him playing. I'm in seventh grade and stuff, and I didn't really care about playing it, but 
when I played Mass Effect 2, I was like, oh, there's not much of exploration. You can't get in your little tank buggy thing geared up, like your exploration vehicle. Um, and then you just send like a lot of probes to planets for quote unquote exploration. But I did like a lot of the uh, gunplay in there. Um, you don't have to worry about ragdoll and the biotic type stuff. And then I, I really liked it, the combat. Like I feel like it had like a, a decent amount of combat. And I, I think I went back and played through the game again, like on the hardest difficulty, mm-hmm. just because I enjoyed the game that much. Uh, I think, I don't know how well it would age on all the gunplay and stuff, especially since you, I mean, it's a third person and Destiny a first person, but I feel like Destiny probably got some of the best gunplay I didn't see in like any games, period. So I feel like um, I'm not sure how well it would age, so I'm kind of curious because that's probably going to beat me to playing Mass Effect 2 because I still ain't get the legendary edition yet. But um, I don't know how it's going to be. And if I'm just remembering it, like, it's a, is it a huge nostalgia effect? I know I had a lot of fun playing that game and stuff like that. And it's by far my favorite one out of one and three, but. Um, I just don't know how much nostalgia and how stiff the game actually going to be and stuff like that <laughs> when I actually play it compared stiff to... Stiff combat, uh, stiff combat. Yeah, I mean, because Andromeda had that stiff combat and stuff, and I was like, I think Andromeda was still stiffer, but I was like, mm-hmm. am I just remembering Mass Effect wrong where it was still kind of stiff? Because I know Mass Effect is a little stiff, but I don't remember it being like how Andromeda was. They was like... Hey, yeah, bro, I got arthritis. I can't move my bones and stuff mm-hmm. like that. So, um, yeah, my joints it's always playing. stiff because for two, they definitely like literally copied the Gears of War like combat style. It's not as slow as Gears of War, but you know, you stick to cover and you can like jump between walls. And when you run, the camera shake and stuff like that. So, it, it is very similar to that slower third person shooter style. But Mass Effect 2 just got, and 3 got more interesting because of the type of weapons that they gave. I feel like that was the biggest improvement to those games and why I liked them more than when I liked Gears of War. Because um, there's just so many different interesting weapons and then your abilities, like you can freeze people and, you know, toss them in the air and stuff like that. Um, and it just all flow together, especially like when you play the multiplayer. Um Mass Effect 1 doesn't really have that. It's, like, super basic. And, like, even with the approved combat, it's not really good third-person combat because, like, the AI is pretty dumb. But 2 and 3, like, they improved it. They actually made a good third-person shooter. And on top of that, it already had a good story. Uh, I, I mean, I think Mass Effect 2 and 3's combat, like, shooting, feels better than, like, some modern games like Outriders. Okay, okay, that's big claims, big claims. Um, so, I mean, I guess sell me on this game. What's the, what's the, what's the, hi- I, I mean, I understand the highlights for y'all, but if somebody really don't understand Mass Effect, really don't understand, like, there's there's been plenty of other games that come out that mm-hmm. done it better at this point, right? Is there a reason to play the original games? Or you mean really- like, did the combat do it better though because like i feel like mass effect had a good I'm talking mass about effect story, story story and like rpg elements like a witcher so i mean it's a more like a i'm not gonna say the rpg aspects are like real real critical i think you got because you don't got like skill trees you have like different like you can allocate your skill points in like different areas if i remember correctly but it's not like super expensive. It's like maybe like four categories, and I could be remembering this wrong. But um, it's like I I think that the thing about Mass Effect is that I really enjoyed is like it felt like you submerge in this environment, you put in a different world. Um, your actions that you make has a lot of influence on the story, and um, you you understand different races' problems. And, like, one thing you'll see in Mass Effect, like, this ongoing war between this, they call, like, the uh, the Quarians and the Geth, and they just don't like each other. But the Quarians made the Geth. So it's, like, but the Geth is, like, these super high-tech AI robots, and they basically they own type of entity, and it's just kind of, like, it's some controversial stuff. And I remember on Mass Effect 2, both of the actions is real messed up or whatever, 
um, like when you do like some like like a loyalty mission, and you like, bro, I'm not gonna shoot these. I'm not gonna mess these guests up. They ain't do nothing. They ain't even asked to be made. But like, they they just trying to fight for their rights. Like they defending themselves. And then you go talk to the Koreans, and they be like, nah, man, these dudes need to disappear. They terrorizing our country and or our planet and all this type of stuff. But you need to do other stuff in order to get your rank up high enough to choose this neutral decision to save both races versus or not save them like from extinction but like you know just to do the right thing and it's trash sometimes because you might go into a mission and you be like dang i because you got this thing called rent like good and bad basically and if your good or bad points ain't high enough then you can't make this neutral decision that's like you know like a um like a good leader like you you trying to be a good leader through that whole game and stuff like that and sometimes you be you could shoot other people in the foot and it might cause their demise and stuff like that. So everything you do in the story feels like it has an impact in the overall game. And I think they did a good job of putting that together versus some games. You, you always hear about people complaining and sound like, well, I feel like my actions ain't really benefit that much in the story. It might have just added another cutscene and stuff like that. But some of the stuff is like, well, you didn't do this. Loyal- you did this loyalty mission too soon. You can't make this decision your loyalty rank on, ain't going to be high enough. And it's the only time you really get the chance to really like build this bond between these two races and stuff like that. So this person might die or something later on, or it might, I don't even know if it can make an effect on mass effect, like the next mass effect, but it's stuff like that. Like you really feel like your decisions make an impact on the game. Yeah. I would say the close, the only game that I feel like that has probably done it better well, actually, not even better, but showing a good example of that is The Witcher 3, where, like, in The Witcher 3, like, you go through the game, and you can make a lot of decisions, and those decisions change key parts of the game. So, you know, you you do one thing, and then the next time you come to the city, the whole city on fire, you got to, you know, try to save people, whereas if you went a different way, that that event wouldn't have happened in the game. Where, but Mass Effect is even more detailed in a lot of those things, where simple conversations people tell you about themselves or they'll tell you a backstory and then that information comes up later because somebody told you or just simple objectives have like three different outcomes it can be well not three different outcomes it's three different ways to do it and you can also do it in a like Jalen said in a good way or a lawful way or you can do it in a bad way or like uh, like you're a criminal so like I was just trying to get a key uh, in Mass Effect 1, and it's like, I could talk to this guy, he's going to give it to me, but I got to do this bad mission for him, or I can report him to the police, and then they give me the key, or I can do something else and help somebody else out, and, like, it's just so many different ways to do that one thing, and it all they all have different consequences based on what you did. So there hasn't been any really... RPGs, especially like space RPGs that have that sort of depth. Because most nowadays, games like Destiny or Outriders, they completely skip the story stuff and only focus on the the gunplay. Whereas back when Mass Effect 2 came out, it had both. And that's why it was so highly regarded. Because it was fun to play, but also Mm -hmm. it still had that deep story where you literally could see every conversation you have affecting the next cutscene or the next couple of missions. And then it, it carries over to like the next game. Like Yeah, what you do in Mass Effect um, One carries over and so if you killed somebody in Mass Effect One, Mass Effect Two, they bl- brothers show up and they're gonna kill you. Or you you don't even have access to this mission because you did this. Yeah, so in a in a world like like I said. So really, really versus... detailed and it made it feel so even if you're going back now, it's still more expansive than a lot of games currently trying. And that's the reason why y'all really enjoyed it because real decisions, real conversations were happening and it felt like it was a huge impact on the game world. And you probably haven't experienced something of that scale lately. Right. Or have it. Yeah, you, you feel like you're a part of the story, bro. Like, I mean, you feel like you Commander Shepard, bro. Like, yeah, I need to make sure the sorry good, some, 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 and 
you be and it's funny scenes on there like a girl might try to like kiss you you know, like smack away like back up me. it's just <laughs> stuff like that i don't know if that's an actual scene and stuff but like some of the renegade actions be funny like the bad yeah like the uh unlawful type actions those ones be funny he be like like shut up or i just kill you right now and they be like whoa i didn't know you were like that commander shepherd i'm sorry like it just be yeah. <laughs> or like you you talking to a reporter and they ask you something crazy you could just punch them <laughs> oh yeah the reporter oh <laughs> that was on mass effect too wasn't it yeah because <laughs> she was trying to like you know how reporters be probing and trying to get you to say <laughs> bad stuff it was just it, it's just funny, dude. Like that game. I'm finna. I really want to play Master X. So I'm finna get that mall. So now I gotta go play this stupid game. I probably shouldn't play this stupid game. Cause guess I what? I mean, you just watch the game. I'm, I'm gonna say it's still yeah, not yeah. Uh, the the cities and like the side quests, walking around talking to people. They didn't really have a lot of that in Andromeda, but it's still the similar structured game. It's not like. It's not like no different. It's not like the gameplay. I'm, I'm not talking about the gameplay that's going to wow me at this point. I'm talking about if the story will wow me or it interests me enough to I feel like I have an impact. Like I said, like you just said, like y'all guys had different, ex- probably had different experience with the same game. That's cool to me, just like Breath of the Wild. I don't think the gameplay is the, all that great, but the, the experience, I have a different experience than y'all had, and that's that's interesting to me. That I don't have the same experience. Like Karina played it, she had a totally different experience than I did, and it's the same game though. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. That stuff interests me. That stuff makes me like not, that, that. That stuff is cool to me, but at the same time, I don't want to put 30 hours into each game to kind of get that experience. But if it's worth it in the end, which most people say is not because they don't like three, then that's why I fall kind of fall to like, uh, do I really want to do it? I mean, and, yeah. Personally, I don't like. Mass Effect Three overall, but it's it's not. How to put it. I still like one and two enough where I feel like I got everything I need out of it. I don't like I know the ending, but it doesn't really matter. Like it doesn't change how I feel about one and two. So it, it depends. I mean, some people might like three. It's just that waiting for three and like having expectations for it and it coming out and being disappointing. It's probably going to be different for somebody who just played it the first time and didn't have any expectations. So, yeah, yeah. So, like, I think my issue with Mass Effect Three was you probably seen memes and stuff about it at this point, and like just spoilers and stuff. Like, um, I mean, it ain't a lot of spoilers, I ain't seen but no basically, spoilers, but I I seen memes and stuff about how bad it is. That's about it. It's not. It's, I think it doesn't really make a whole ton of sense, but the whole issue is that. Like, all your decisions in Mass Effect 1 matter, and they carry over to Mass Effect 2. And then all your decisions from Mass Effect 2 matter, and they carry over to Mass Effect 3. But at the very end, it doesn't take into account, like, all three games' decision-making. The ending is always the same. Like, you could you could be completely evil throughout the whole thing, and that doesn't matter in the ending, because the ending is always, like, the same three variations. So gotcha. people were disappointed that like you got invested in all of it and they didn't really do a good job of like showing like your character's decision at the end. It's just this is how it ends. Yeah, you it I I personally didn't finish it. I seen my brother finish it and stuff like that. And I didn't feel like enough stuff that I did in the game helped out with the ending and stuff like that because the endings mass effect don't really got like a like a you got like worse and like worse endings and stuff like that but it's like like josh said the three variations there's not like a a good ending and i think i mean i'm not gonna say mass effects one two and one and two really ending really changed depending on what you did um it changed to some capacity it but it wasn't the like side characters that were yeah in the next game so like yeah, some, some people just weren't there, depending on your ending. And and that's fine, but I think overall with Mass Effect, I think the ending of everything that you just did was lackluster, and I think that's a lot of the issue with three. Like three, kind of, I felt like one and two kind of connected a little bit better, and I felt like three could potentially, I ain't gonna say it could be this own standalone game, but I felt like it tied in the game 
a little bit less uh it, it tied it in in a weaker fashion than it did because it was like some of the people that you used to like fight with that came over from one and two they stopped fighting and stuff with you and started doing other stuff and you started basically just getting a whole new crew and some of this it was like inconsistencies with the story so like you got like the reapers and they basically like convert like beings or whatever but like it didn't make sense from what you seen what they did in one and two to the to the way they looked in three and three they looked at way different and it just kind of seemed like it was almost like like discontinuity going on and then the, like i said the ending when you get to the end of the game i'm gonna just be honest with you there's no final boss and um there's not like a like a optimal like a optimal or a good ending for all the work that you put in for the game like you feel like they smacked you on the face kind of so yeah that was I my mean, you played cyberpunk and i think cyberpunk has very different endings the and final missions which i liked about it that the whole final mission is different for each of the endings whereas if no matter which one you picked it's always the same with always mm -hmm. the same outcome with you and johnny you know because like there's a whole bunch of different decisions you can make that determine your know, ending but like if it's always the same no matter what you do you know you can't change what v and johnny do then it will be disappointing and that's really the issue like you you might have enjoyed the whole game up to that point but the ending you suddenly don't have that same level of control you have over the rest of the game otherwise i mean the other games i think are still good and like i feel like they end like it's still stuff to be solved but they end at a decent point where it's not like even if you skip mass effect 3 it's not like you you missing out on everything yeah, you definitely, okay. That, well, that that was like a a weaker point, and it definitely Mass Effect Three just like the game was rushing, like different little issues was coming up in the game that wasn't relevant to the series up until this point. Like it was, it was just weird. Like I feel like they really rushed that game. Well, it kind of you you had me in the first half, then you lost me because basically you you confirmed my worries is that the payoff isn't worth it, but at the same time you're saying two one and two on its own still were worthy games enough to kind of buy the trilogy because of the how much you enjoy just the story so i'm assuming i, I guess one-liners favorite thing like Persona 5. you enjoyed about mass effect one and then favorite thing you enjoyed about mass effect two for both of y'all go you gonna start chilling <laughs> I mean, Mass Effect 1, I just liked it, the, the the RPG sense, like the exploration type thing. It wasn't like my favorite thing. Mass Effect 2, I just liked it. The, um, I think the combat, and it had enough exploration in there where you can just get, you can't really get lost like you can like in Mass Effect 1, like in the Citadel and stuff like that, because they made like the, the main place that they made it smaller. But you can just wander and talk to people and just do like random stuff or whatever. Um, so I kind of liked it that, but mainly it's just a gunplay. So Mass Effect One exploration RPG aspect, Mass Effect Two, the um the gunplay and the challenge that it had. Yeah, for me, Mass Effect One, like you said, it's the exploration. Like the main city or the main spaceship that you're on is huge, and I just like walking around, going to the different floors, and talking to people, and everybody got like quests that relate to each other and it just it's just a nice place to like explore and uh really get that like deep story that you really want and mass effect 2 i'd say it's partly the missions or the, the gameplay as well because they have this thing that they added in 2 which is loyalty missions so like you got like a party a, a six or whatever and like each one they have their own like personal side story and their loyalty mission is like like they're you know you you gonna earn a loyalty and they're gonna do whatever for you mm -hmm. and you learn a lot about them and their backstory and the things that they're facing and i feel like that is the best part of the two because you really start to like the characters okay so the so a little bit of the 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 the, the, um, the branching overarching story but then also because it kind of, it kind of uh, also elaborates further on those characters, right? That's what you just said. For two, I mean, yeah, 
Because, um, okay. I mean, if you, well, you know, lose a character, then they're, they're not going to, or don't do their loyalty mission, it mm. affects the rest of the game. And so, you know. Gotcha. No, that makes sense. So, it's 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 good that um, that type of game kind of existed because it kind of helped build in all the rest of them, right? Because I like those types of gameplay elements in other games where they kind of Oh, yeah, ramp. everybody copied this, oh. like, Outer yeah. Wilds and Fallout and all them. Like, they copied that directly from Mass Effect. Yeah. Which is cool. So, I mean... It depends, really. If I have time to play 22, 3, 30 hour games, I might, but I don't think I would have the time anytime soon. So it would be a gradual type of deal where I would have to play it gradually. And I don't know how fast. I'm still playing Demon Souls, and that came out in November. So it's kind of like yeah. that type of situation. Again, I think it's a Kingdom Hearts situation. I like one, but it might be best to start with two. <laughs> Dang. Dang. It has a good story. It's just I, you're not, you know, I think if you don't like the gameplay, you're not gonna have the motivation to continue. It, so it's just the thing. But the characters aren't good enough to continue on without it, without the gameplay. Is the character like development and like the stuff you're doing in there? Is it really, really necessary, or is it like it feels like it's just more of a chore now because of how bad the game is? No, I mean, the, the game is set up in a way where it's like you can spend most of your time doing like the, the side quests, talking to people stuff. You're still going to have to do missions every now and then, but they're pretty short. And like you don't have to do the side quests. It's just, you know, it's better so you can level up and stuff like that. Gotcha. Okay. Josh, all do right. you know if the DLC is in Mass Effect 2? Yeah, all the DLC and characters are in 2. Hmm. I think there was only one DLC that was from one that's missing, but the people said it was like a bad DLC anyway. So. Okay. Okay. All right. Well, um, any last things y'all want to say about Mass Effect before we move to our next topic? Um, I don't know. They're supposed to be making a Mass Effect Four, continuing the same, like forget about Andromeda. We gonna bring back the old characters, but. I don't know. Bioware, they they made nothing good recently, so we'll, we'll see. <laughs> yeah. Uh, hey, hey, I don't, I don't think I, I I ain't gonna I ain't gonna hold my breath. That's what I say. But next thing, next thing I wanted to talk about was something. Um, I guess I can I can take the lead on because I don't think y'all really know about it. I just find it very interesting. Um, it's that uh, podcast beef with old uh, Rory Maul and Joe Beasy. Not the Joe B- Biden, but the Joe Budden. <laughs> so uh, I've been filing very closely. I've paid my $12. I've gotten the scoop from Joe Budden. And I've gotten the scoop from Rory and Maul. <laughs> I'm back to report uh basically what happened and why do i think it's interesting to talk about about in this podcast uh i find it interesting because simply put there were friends money got involved and then now they're not friends (laughs) and i feel like that whole situation Makes it makes me feel like um, I I guess I kind of wanted to talk about the situation first and then pose a question. The situation was that they were under contract. They were had like a percentage based contract or whatever, and they were trying to figure out the books. Basically, they were trying to look at the accounting to see how much the business was making in order for them to know what their payout should be. That wasn't something Joe Budden or his um, reps was doing. They basically were not providing that information. When they did provide that information, it came to fruition that basically Joe was paying them more than what their percentage was uh, off the strength. But 
it was only for a certain period of time. After that, they asked for the accounting again, and they kept getting refusals of no. But so it wasn't in regards to them feeling as if he was stealing. It was in regards to them not being able to have access to stuff that they normally should be able to have access to, especially when you're under a percentage based contract. Your 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 percent is based off on how much the business earns. So to not be able to see the books, you're basing all you're trusting a lot more than you should have to. Because again, this information is supposed to be accessible to you. If you realize that the individual is paying you more than what you actually supposed to earn and they were willing to show you that, do you continue to press forward to get that, that, that accounting or how would you react in that situation? Um, I mean, in their situation, I think it matters because they are, I forget what they said, but it's like, um, a small group, like ownership or partnership type deal. So where depend, like Joe Biden could go out tomorrow, sign a deal with Comcast and that affects all of them. So they would at least be briefed on what's in the deal, what's in the contract and things like that. Like if they all of a sudden change the payment structure, y'all not getting paid every week or every two weeks, y'all getting paid once a month. Like that's something that obviously affects them right away. So I think in their situation, like, yeah, I will. I mean, it. you only can go so far with like asking your friend or family member to show you and they keep saying no. And then at that point you gotta do what is in your rights. like. You know, see if you get a lawyer or things like that. Obviously, you want to try to, like, keep it in between y'all so it doesn't get, like, too difficult or awkward. But it's a, at some point, they just keep telling you, no, you're going to have to do what you have to do in order to get results. Right. Um, you know, I mean, with bigger companies or if it was a different structure, you know, I don't really care what my employer, like, the company makes, you know, it, as long as they're giving me the information that affects me um so i i think in that situation like yeah they they were deserving of more information and it's not wrong to like try to get what's deserved to you yeah 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 um that information was supposed to be a, uh can it was supposed to be accessible the information is supposed to have the ability to show exactly how much they've earned and it is supposed to give them reassurance that everything is on the up and up now if I'm your friend and I feel that I am going above and beyond to bring you to, to make sure that you're taken care of and when we finally are able to access a portion of the books kind of we show that is true as well. Do you continue to still push? Is that's that's really just yes or no, really? Because do you feel like? Um, I basically kind of want to know if if you guys feel like Joe has any reason to feel a way about any of it. I mean, like, feel a way that they pushing to get more, way wanting to see the paperwork, essentially? Exactly. Feel a way about how he feels about how they're, how, how it shows that he's being generous, and yet, you don't trust me that I'm doing this because you still need to see the books. I mean, I feel like he has a right to feel that way, but I mean... I always feel like transparency is like key. So I mean, to answer your question, I feel like he does has a right to feel that way. If he's given more than what is agreed upon. Yeah, on a personal level, like 
he's doing the kindness, he's taking care of his friends, and them not trusting him, he feels betrayed. Like, I understand that on a personal level, but it, when it, like, literally on any other business level, that doesn't matter. Because let's say I'm rich, and y'all mm -hmm. both living with me in my house, and I told y'all, y'all gonna be straight. Don't worry about what money coming in. Y'all gonna be straight. I'm pay for whatever y'all need, and that's it. But y'all are have questions like where the money coming from or things like that. And on a personal level, like yeah, like I can feel like I'm taking care of y'all. Why y'all bothering me with this? But for y'all, for y'all safety or for y'all, even just like comfort, y'all want some sort of information not to be just in the dark. So y'all would feel some type of way about that. So it's like especially when it comes to a business and your career, I feel like if they are partners, quote unquote, uh -huh. then they deserve that information regardless of what Joe feels. Because if it's a business, it should Joe doesn't have to be involved with that conversation. Like they go to the accountant, the accountant gives them that information. And they shouldn't have to go through Joe to get that. And that's the issue. Right. Yeah, I feel, I feel, I feel both sides. I think I feel Rory's and Maul's a little more because it, it, it's an easy fix. Just give them what they need to see. And it's not like you're doing anything wrong. If you're not trying to hide anything, you're not trying to be malicious. Why does it matter for them to be able to have access to that every quarter, every year? to show exactly what, okay, when we look at this, the reporting is show reflects exactly how much you pay. And if you were being generous, great. You get you a pat on the back. Why does it matter for them to see it? Why does it matter for them to ask for it? Why does it, why do you, why does it hurt when they ask for it? It doesn't make sense to me because if you're on the up and up and you're being honest and you're being truthful, it shouldn't really matter about what they're able to see. And if you're providing them and you're saying that they have it and they have this and they don't seem satisfied with what you're providing, then you, then you at that point, either you will have to start to break down and to really understand why they, they feel that way or to actually look into what you're providing them. What are your accountants providing them? What are your CPAs providing them? Are they actually providing them useful information? Are they providing them wrong information? Are you are you taking the time out your day to kind of help and work through that? Because at this at the end of the day, those are supposed to be your guys, and if they don't feel respected by your CPA or your accountant or whoever is providing them information, and you're not stepping up for them to say, hey, does they need this information because that's what they're, this is the type of business we're running here? Then who is really going to do it? And that's where I started coming into that whole respect thing. He's like. I, you know, I don't got no respect here because basically you treat us like employees when we're, we're actually partners, you know what I'm saying? So that's where I started to fall and like understand, I starting to, you know, come aboard to Rory and Ma because it seems as if it's an easy fix that Joe is just refusing to do. And it seems very weird and it comes off very standoffish for no reason. So, you know what they say? Pride is the devil. <laughs> Pride is the devil. I think I got a hold on me. <laughs> hey, man. J. Cole out. Yeah, J. I mean. Yeah. I don't know. I just felt like, you know, if we if if, if we is in business, I mean, y'all my best friends and stuff like that. I don't like mixing friends and business and stuff, you know, stuff like that. So I feel like the, the easiest way to mitigate all of that is just to have, like, transparency and like I said I don't I don't he, he has a right to feel that way but if I'm taking a side just from the overall picture from the little information I do know I'm sure mm -hmm. there's more intricacies to it but I just felt like just disclosing that or you know whatever issue is like that could is is less if, if people are transparent you don't feel like you're getting this, like bamboozled or swindled or something even though they shouldn't feel like that because they get it more but still my thought, and this is how I'm gonna break it down, is my thought is that he didn't want them, he didn't want them anymore. He didn't want them to be on the payroll. He didn't want them to be partners anymore. He wanted to get rid of them. That's the that's the only thing I can think of that would make him react in this type of way, because he, 
I think I think they alluded to him trying to give them on salary in in the next year because they didn't want to sign the contract that he was writing up. So it feels as if yet the underlining thing is I'm going to stand tall on this so they can start a problem, we can draw a rift, and then they can just bounce and I can be the I can look like I'm the good guy or whatever. But really, in our reality, this is kind of what you wanted anyway. And that's yeah. what it seemed like to me. It seemed like. And I'm not saying that he did it on purpose. I'm not saying that that's what truly what his thoughts are. This is my thought process behind why would you treat a friend that way and why would you treat that situation that way, especially when it's very sensitive. It's a sensitive situation. I would put more care into that situation because guess what? I have to deal with these people every day. We have to have, a, we have, to have great content. We have to make sure everybody's morale is high. And yet, all I think he kind of was under felt like what he had to do was give them more money, when you really should have been doing a lot more than just giving them more money. Like if I don't have conversations with y'all before we had these talks or whatever, I don't think I feel like it's just it's weird to kind of just try to jump into topics and topics and topics without actually having an understanding of where everybody headspace is. I don't want to bring this up and then like have people feel like that they ain't really into it anyway so why why are we even having this conversation so i think it's a lot more work that goes into having like those types of things it's not just coming and chill i think rory was going through like he was breaking up with his wife and all that stuff and it was just his uh, fiance or whatever and i think it was just kind of a lot of small things that kind of added up to something big that was that could have probably been fixed but i think ego pride a lot of other stuff played into it, so it didn't get fixed. Um, but it, it just seems very weird for that to be the, end, the ending of it, you know? Something that's not like, um, not something super impactful, not something that's like could really cause a rift. Money wasn't the issue. It wasn't like they were, oh, we're not getting paid enough. They didn't even care about the payment at that point. They just wanted to see something to show that they were going to be respected as partners. I think Joe never wanted them to be considered partners. And that's what the rift was. It simply was, you know, I don't respect you enough to call you my partner. You built it with me, but you're not a partner. You're an employee. So you got to respect that you're an employee. And that's what the finalization came to. They had to come to realization that that's what he considers them to be, employees. And that's why he's acting like that. So, yeah. you if you treat me like that, we're not really friends. I don't really respect you. I'm going to come in here and pretend like we're having this conversation. And to not even be able to f- understand that problem and to think that anything could really solve that with that respect and stuff like that is kind of telling to a person's character. So, that's why I was kind of like, yeah, it ain't going to never be the same. Even if you bring more people in, you can treat them the same way. I don't really respect that. The chemistry was the reason why I was chiming in anyway. And I don't think no chemistry there no more. Yes, uh, Joe Button is highly entertaining. Yes, he's like a... I'm more than likely, if I if, if I watch something from them again, it'd probably be from acting him. I liked acting him. So, um, that would be the, the next thing I'll probably watch. I'm not going to watch Joe Button's you know, podcast. I'm not saying that it's going to be bad. Cause it still have funny moments with um, the new guys as well, and I enjoy some of the conversations. I just don't, I don't respect the situation enough, or I respect this what what's happened enough to kind of give them this, you know, the benefit of the doubt. Because I think that is just wrong. Um, even if he, even if he kind of explains it in a better way, it's still wrong because that's what the that's the end of that's the end of it is. At the end of it all is that. He did not respect them enough to be considered partners, so he did not respect them enough to put them in that, to put them in that space to say, you know, these people need this information, these people deserve this information, and this is why they need it, and this is why we they should they're going to have it. It was always a fight because they was like, y'all just employees, y'all come work for me, y'all need to chillax and just you know do what I need y'all to do basically, and that's wrong in my opinion, especially with friends like that and the people that you signed a contract with, especially stating that they're percentage-based partners. <laughs> it's in the name, bro. It's not like they are making it up. It's not like they're salary-based. If they're salary-based, I understand. Like, shut up and get your check. But they're percentage-based. That means that, that 
they have to work to kind of grow the business. I understand Joe's gripe there is like, y'all ain't did nothing to help grow the business. But that is the core of the business, the put the, the podcast. So all they have to do is show up there. Yes, it sucks that you're doing the most of the work. Yes, it's annoying that, you know, they are not benefiting. The, you're, they're not doing the, the leg work to keep the business or the, to keep it entertaining or keep it not entertaining to keep it, you know, to, to keep pushing forward and thriving making the big make making big plays getting the big contracts come in but at the end of the day it's called the joe button podcast with rory and Maul. so you already knew you was gonna have to do more of the leg right so why are you complaining about it now and that's what's weird to me it's like you already knew this y'all was doing it for a long time why are you so mad about it now doesn't make any sense uh so that's what's weird to me and i think Having that understanding, like, is really, and I'm pretty sure he don't get the same percentage as them. He probably gets a bigger percentage for doing this stuff. So it's just like, what's what's really the gripe here, Joe? What's really causing this rift? And I think it's just him not respecting them like that. And that's that's cool. It's fine. But I don't know, man. If I had, if if that was the situation, I don't think I would be, you know, I would tell y'all why I feel this way. And I would make sure y'all understand that this is why I feel this way before I just start to make my, let my actions speak. I would tell y'all, I would give you guys like some type of, and maybe he was giving them heads up. Maybe it was just all these back, back and forth conversations. Cause he said it was been going on for two years. I just think that, um, once that, once the level of respect is lost, I don't think you can ever really get it back. No, no matter how hard you kind of try to do so. So that's where I was at with it. And, um, yeah, yeah I'm, 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 I'm cool on it now. I feel like, um, I, I dissected it enough. I kind of got a lot of good, a lot of the story. Um, and it doesn't really matter what, what has been said and what hasn't, it really just comes down to the, like the, the reason what happened, reason why it, it all, it, it imploded on 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 itself so and i think that's just respect level in this respect of being an employee versus a, a actual partner so i think that's where it, that's kind of where it fell mm-hmm. um which is you know unfortunate but you, know, you, you live and learn you move forward and i think i think the podcast will be fine uh without them and i think that the people will still tune in but i mean i just won't be one of them um, but yeah, that's how, that's, how, that's pretty much it for the podcast beef. It was, um, it was just interesting. It's entertaining. I, I'll say I'm disappointed as well because I don't want to just say it was entertainment because I, 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 I liked it. Their conversations they had, even though they're not talking about much, it was just fun banter to listen to. It was inter- it was entertainment because it was just three people that knew each other quite, quite well. And they were just talking. You know, that's easy to hear, easy to listen to, because that's that's usually you have stories, you usually have, you know, uh, similarities and stuff like that. So, um, but yeah, that's pretty much it on the podcast beef. The next thing, because I don't know how to segue and I never will, people. Um, mm-hmm. The next topic that I wanted to talk about, let me, let me get the time stamp. Where we at? Where we at? Okay. Next topic I wanted to talk about was um, uh, J. Cole, that cold, cold, cold world. That, uh, what's it, off season? What's it called? The off season? Yeah. yeah. Um, we ain't going to have much time to speak on it because we only got like a little bit left. We might not be able to talk about Apex if we, if we don't, how long, depending on how long this is. So, I've listened to it multiple times. How many times have y'all listened to it? It's only been out for a couple, like four days. How long? How many times y'all listened to it? Uh, I probably listened to it maybe like twice. Maybe like twice, he say. Mm-hmm. How many times have for you, Josh? Um, I've lost count. Uh, it's, it's more than 10, 10, 20. 
Because it's a short album. It's only 30 minutes anyways. So I just leave it on like if I'm working or something. Okay, okay, okay. Um, yeah, I've listened to it about, you know, four or five times now. Um, and it, it gets better as I play it. You know, Terrence was in my ear telling me, you know, oh, it's the greatest thing ever. This is goat tier. And I was like, yeah, yeah, I, 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 he definitely is very consistent. And, um, I really enjoy to listen back to the rhymes and really dissect what he's saying. Cause he do give you a little bit something to dissect. Um, definitely, I'm not gonna knock his ability to wordplay, but um, yeah. So I enjoyed it. I appreciated the album. Um, I am a I'm a semi big Cole fan. I really love a f like some of his projects, and then I really don't like some of the other ones. But I can definitely say he got two classics in my opinion already um before this off season so i enjoy j cole uh and, and I, like i said i liked it uh i i guess i'm gonna leave it right there and then i'm gonna let y'all go and then we can discuss further <laughs> what, what's your favorite song on her amiri no, Sorry. actually, and, and it's, it's messed up because I really like the climb back, and but it's already been out for forever. But I really like the climb back. But uh, I like Amiri too. So those are like. What you mean it's been out forever? The climb, the climb back, back is, a is, is a single. Came out last year. Came out last year. Oh, I did. It wasn't like on Wall Street or something like that? The same thing with Lion King on Ice? Yeah, uh, I think so. Oh, uh, okay, yeah, yeah. That, I was, I was looking at that. I'm like, man, why does name look familiar, man? Yeah, it came out a while. Okay, but it's been it's on the album, so I can say that one because I like that song a lot. Uh -oh. But yeah, uh, those are my two. I have one, if I had to pick one, is Climb Back. But I think everything else is just too new. I I really love Climb Back, so. So <laughs> I think that's what it is, but um uh but if I had to pick one it'd be the climb back. What about you, Josh? Um I I think the best two are Let Go My Hand and Amari. Um I like a lot of the other songs, but those I feel like are the the two that I go back to the most. Like you know, over the next few years, I'll probably keep them in rotation. Yeah. Okay, okay. I'll probably say mine is, uh, I think it's probably like Hunger on Hillside. Yeah. Yeah, Hunger on Hillside is like good too. Uh, and I think the, I think the, I think the problem is that they all are decent and like all are good songs. Like I didn't have a song I didn't like. Except for, let me look. I gotta pull up the track list. It I was mean, one. I, it's like I, I think it's like the third song. song oh. Is a hundred mil, but it grew on me. Like I don't hate it, but I feel like it's the weakest because, like, the rhymes are straight, but like the little hook that I had, it's like, I got a hundred mil, blah blah blah. So it, like it don't really work. Um, oh yeah, yeah, yeah. And that's the only one that has like a, I feel like a beat that I I don't like. Yeah, that's the, the one where he tries to get, you know, get get closer to the the scene of now and like like I yeah. said, he when he make his beats, I don't really enjoy them. So I I can listen to them, but I don't enjoy them. So um Yeah, I think the one I don't like the most uh No, I like that one. I'm trying to think. Well, I, I probably can touch on that. Like, it, there aren't any, I would say there are no bad songs. Yeah. But a lot of them, I feel like there are some good songs, but they're short. Like, Amari mm -hmm. is two minutes. Like, I, I like it, but I wish it was longer. Mm -hmm. And the other songs are, some of them might just be okay to some people. Um, 
Oh, wait, what's the song? Uh, I think Punch in the Clock yeah. is, um, like, I like the rhymes, but the beat is not really interesting. It doesn't have, like, a, a hook. So, it, it's okay. I can see myself, like, skipping that one sometime if I'm not in the mood. Yeah. Um, and I think that's the thing. I, I like it a lot, and I personally like it more than Kato, KOD, because I feel like KOD, he had, like, a big idea, kind of like Kendrick, and he wanted to wrap it all together with a big theme. But it didn't really work for me. Whereas this one is just garbage. <laughs> Whereas this one he doesn't have a, a theme. He's just, you know, it's him, you know, doing his thing, he's just gonna rap. I think it's better for that. Mm-hmm. But I also think it's not as like interesting. Um I think it I mean I mean, I haven't listened to a lot of music this year. I feel like maybe it's up there with like the best music that's come out this year. But I feel like if Kendrick came out with the album tomorrow like people wouldn't be talking about this one as much and I don't think it's because it's bad it's just not as uh, might not be as impactful for some people yeah uh, I think pretty, so too I'd say it's pretty safe honestly it's a safe it's a very safe album in my opinion you're absolutely right I, I think like it's 12 a... songs and two of them have already been singles mm. you know and the interlude is like a one minute rap so like i like it but it's only one minute (laughs) yeah and um yeah i think i think it's i think it's like um it's it's very i i I don't want to say forgettable it's more so not forgettable but um you don't have to you don't have to listen to it more than 10 times to understand the, the point you don't even have to listen to it 10 times you can listen to it two to three times and understand most of his lines and understand most of his lyricism in it and there's nothing to reflect on in my opinion now there's meaningful sound words in the in the songs and it, it it's not and they don't need to be sometimes like sometimes people get over rappy and i don't like it Sometimes people just have just decent enough rhymes to make me to make me feel something, and also to make not let everything go over my head. Where I have to replay it multiple times. I don't want to. That's why I don't listen to Royce. That's why I don't listen to people like them because I just don't like their music because it's just my logic. Yeah, I don't listen to them because they they sometimes <laughs> they try to manipulate the words either too much or they try to make the bars hard too too hard. So that way, when you really are just trying to really trying to get through it, and maybe I'm maybe I'm the, I'm the catalog or the person that's you know dumb it down, but whatever, I don't care. I don't like those types of songs. I like meaningful, meaningful, impactful words and impactful um, music, though. So um, I don't think Kendrick gets too witty. I don't think J. Cole gets too witty. I don't think Big Sean gets too witty. I think they all fit in that same category for me of people that can rhyme a rhyme and still have a strong impact. And I felt most of that on most of these songs. So mm-hmm. he wins in my book. But the, is it like, you know, goat tier? Is it something I'm going to go back and put next to Forest Hill or even Sporn Center? No. I liked, I really like Born Center. Mm-hmm. And those are still my two classics for him. Um, so it's not ever going to, it's not going to, it's not going to replace those. But at, at the same time, those were different times that music impacted me in a different way when I was listening to it. Uh, so I understand that too. So for the people that are new J. Cole fans and for the people that are really looking for, you know, bars from him, You'll you'll be happy. This is this is fine. This is not uh it's not bad music. But it's just not music that I'm going to continuously listen to, especially you're not going to be riding down the street listening to this. I don't I the only ones that are worthy of that to, in my opinion that have that type of tempo is like a hundred mil. Um The Climb Back. Ninety five South. And I don't like the screaming at the end. So I don't know if I'm yes. listening to 95 South. Yeah, uh, I felt like uh, Lil John, you know, the old, you know, yeah. music when he was in seventh grade, 
East yeah. Little John and the East Side Boy. I'm like, all right. <laughs> yeah, I, I just didn't like. I like the Cameron talking. I think I wish he would have just let Cameron either, you like you said, Josh play have a verse or just let him talk out the ending. It didn't. I didn't need the you know rep your click. I just didn't. I didn't need that. But um, maybe that was his art. Art. It's, it's his artistic palette. That's what he wanted to put on there. That's what he did. So that's fine. But me personally did not need it. Um, and that's why I probably won't. I won't bump the song. I like the song from the beginning. I like the rhymes. I just don't like the hook. Ain't good. And then there's no. There's no real reason for them to scream at the end. So if it's just if it's list it's if, it, if it's listened to within the album, then it's fine. On its own, it is not. My life, I'm fine with listening to my life, uh, even though it's not one of those types of songs. But I enjoy Twenty One Savage and I enjoy J Cole, um, and I enjoy this hook of my life uh, more than I like Hundred Mil. So I will listen to my life. I probably can listen to Applying Pressure, Mari. And I can listen to Climb Back, and that's it for me. Everything else I can, I don't need. So I will put those on my playlist. Huh? You can ride the Pride as the Devil. Nah. <laughs> I like Pride as the Devil a lot, though. And, and it's funny because I did, I, 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 I like it more because of what he's talking about, more than like the song or like the hook. And like, it's just what he's talking about. It's it's very true. It's very honest, and I feel like he, he um, like I, I respect people when they talk about real stuff, and not just chains or whatever and stupidity stuff. So that is true, and I think um I really do like that one, but I ain't gonna bump it. Um, but I don't sit around and I bump. I don't bump like, I don't bump people that that do that either i just i just play music that can have some that can you know bring some thought and i find the melodies to be great and fun and interesting to listen to so um yeah j cole put out a great a decent album very decent album i wouldn't take that away from him and you gonna keep it keep playing it Jalen. i know you ain't you know busy this ain't really gym music so you always in the gym yeah, I was about to say, uh, shoot, I, I, I'm a, I'm a definitely listen to it. Usually, like when I got like songs and stuff, I, I like to download them. But I'm gonna cool. figure out like the songs that I want to keep on her, that I want to, you know, add them to. Because you know, Apple Music, you can add them to your library, and then you can actually download them to your phone and stuff like that. And the ones I download to the phone is the songs that I like. You know, they make it past that cut or whatever, and. um it's a couple of them on there that I'm like contemplating on downloading and stuff like that. Like, like all, you know, just kind of like all purpose. Like I listen to this regardless just because I enjoy the song, whether I'm working out, whether I'm just chilling or whatever. So, um, I'm going to listen through it a, a couple of times and stuff like that. And kind of, you know, cause you know, J Cole, like he don't really, um, Simone had said something. She was like, he don't really make like upbeat, like fast tempo type music type stuff he always kind of got like more chill music and that's kind of true um he not have been to have like a hype song or whatever i mean not a recently at least but um but yeah i mean I, i'm gonna listen to it again a, a couple of times try to figure out what other songs like on there right now my favorite is hunger on hillside like i had said um i liked it um amari or their harvey pronounce it um 95 south they don't like the Trap or not the trap, the Lord John and the East Side Boys vibe they gave at the end. <laughs> Representential attack. <laughs> um, I did like the let go, uh, let go of my hand a little bit. I just ain't really like the beat that much as I thought I did from the first time I heard it. Um, I'm trying to think. I did like the song, I think it's what My Life with 21 Savage. Mm-hmm. Uh, and then, um, there's another song on there that was pretty decent that I enjoy it was I'm gonna have to listen to 100 mil and applying pressure because it was one of those songs I feel like was pretty straight it say it's featuring boss like is he is he on there he was singing it okay I probably will not paying that much attention now I just heard him say Hideo Kojima one song I was like mm, he, he know about Metal Gear Solid <laughs> Yeah, man. He um, 
I I appreciate Cole's music, so I'm a, I'll leave it at that. Um, but what I also want to talk about is how much he sold, and uh, he did it with a 12 song album, and uh, uh, he did it with a 12 song album, a decent 12 song album. wasn't great, wasn't amazing. But it was decent. Pre- previous um, album he did wasn't great. It was decent. Kod. Kod. Kod was trash, bro. I'm not. It's. I'm not. I never listened to it again. I'm not saying that. Yeah. I'm not going to call out the limb and say it's trash because people enjoyed it. I'm going to say I know enjoyed it. <laughs> it was a decent album because I was able to get through it. It was palatable. At the end of it, I was done. But it was palatable. So, in my opinion, and I'm I'm rehashing it again, (laughs) you already know who my favorite rapper is, and and the the production (laughs) severely outpaces the production on J. Cole's albums. The lyricism is not off by much. I can say that J. Cole can rap sometimes better than Big Sean. But it's not often. But he sells 300000 or so. And it does that. I guess, it, obviously, the sales doesn't matter. The level of respect, I would say, is what really irks me. Because... I, I, I feel like the production level and the ability to create sounds and music is very, it's very important. J. Cole does it all by himself and he does a okay job most of the time. Obviously, Big Sean does it and he has all these different production teams and like, you know, he has different producers come and work for him. And he does the lyricism in a decent or sometimes and I feel like I'm not going I don't want to get myself set no J. Cole fans sometimes he can rap better than J. Cole sometimes he can't sometimes he say corny lines sometimes J. Cole say corny lines but I don't think there are, are they, it's, I don't think they're far off from each other when it comes to rapping ability what makes J. Cole's music resonate more with people I feel like he, I feel like, I'm trying to think, I personally feel like J. Cole flow, I'm trying to figure out, mm, I don't, maybe, maybe I like more chillish, like music and stuff like that, and I feel like it might be the way he delivers lines and stuff like that, I don't know. Um, like how many songs did Detroit Two have? Twenty. Probably like twenty five. Like twenty, twenty one. Twenty one. I think so. Yeah. It's a couple songs on there that I listened to, and I just listened to some of these songs today. Um, but I mean, I don't know, man. Like, yeah, I feel like big. I feel like uh, Big Sean when he raps. I feel like J. Cole is more consistent than what Big Sean is when they rap. Like some songs level of level of level of delivery and consistency and tone, or more so level of like lyricism. Like lyricism and like um I mean the tone obviously not gonna be the same. He might uh, depend on a song or whatever, but like the consistency with like the, the bars and stuff like that. I feel like those are way more consistent across them twelve songs. Than I heard in Detroit too. Mm. Granted, Detroit too got more songs, but I felt like some of the songs he had on Detroit too, and I was just like, "Bro, I don't know what you're doing." So I'm just like, just not listen to this ever again. Right. Um, and I felt like he's done that in other songs, and I don't. I'm not a. I'm not a huge Big Sean fan. I haven't listened to a lot of his albums and stuff like that, but. Sometimes I feel like when Big Sean raps, I don't, I can't fully under, I feel like rapping is art, so it might have some abstractness to it. Sometimes I don't know what Big Sean is talking about. 
Mm. Like I was listening to like bigger than uh bigger than me. His is like seven 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 eleven something. He just I was just like I don't I don't know what this means, bro. I still like the song, but it's some of the stuff I don't know what he means. I feel like with J Cole, I can understand what he's talking about with some, even though my has some extract abstractness is more grounded than what Big Sean might say. Sometimes I feel like Big Sean might just say words to fill in a stanza or something mm-hmm. and then finish it off with like a good line or something. So it just kind of get obscured. But when I'm listening to the lyrics hardcore, some of the stuff I just like, I don't know what he's talking about. Okay. It's a quick, good critique. No. And I respect that critique. What about you, Josh? Um, I'll be honest, like, I haven't listened to Big Sean's more recent work. Like, the last thing I listened to was the one you recommended, which was the Dark Sky. Um, Paradise. Yeah, it was like 2015. Yeah, that one, I felt it was okay, but the issue I always have with Big Sean is, like, I know J. Cole does it too, like, put in corny lines every now and then, like, Jalen always talking about the one, like, he always got to talk about like, and stuff. I feel like Big Sean did those the same thing but he did it more often and the issue is it it also always sounded corny like a lot of rappers say corny lines but they make it sound okay or they how they deliver it Mm -hmm. you know it it lands you like you'll forgive it I feel like for the longest time Big Sean would just throw out a lot of lines and some of them were corny and they didn't really didn't have like good delivery so that just i didn't like his rapping style and then he always do like the super rap fast rap and like okay like i don't care um and i i feel like Jalen, what he Jalen said j cole has always been consistent where he's you know you might get a story in there or the verse overall is going to have a theme that he's going to try to stick to and it's not just like he's rapping or just throwing rhymes out. Um, so I feel like that's always been his strength. I will always agree that Big Sean makes might make a better song like that you can play or play on the radio or things like that. And his singles will probably ch- always chart higher than what J. Cole can do. But I think J. Cole, people always go to him for a, a solid... I don't know solid album right. like usually like I, I hate 20 song albums because i might like six out of the 20 and i feel like this is just i wasted a bunch of time listening to this whereas like you know I, even though i don't think every song on all season is amazing it's still pretty rare to put out an album that you know 90 percent of it is like you would say is good uh, i think that is mm-hmm. something that um I would commend him on. Um, not to say that Big Sean can't do twelve good songs. It's just I I respect the ability to you know these are the best ten songs and put it out and that gives people a positive impression of your work and it's not just throwaway songs on there. Okay. So okay, well that that and that makes sense. I guess that would make sense for me to to like um, what was that carter five i hated carter five it was like five songs and it was like 25 songs on the album yeah that 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 right there kind of is a is important um is important distinction basically is that the the amount of music the level of uh, creativity when it comes to the lyrics and then the ability to deliver those said lyrics in a meaningful way. Maybe because I I am more um, I'm more uh, willing to listen to his music multiple times through that when it comes to those lines that I felt have been out of place they're more palatable and they're more easy mm-hmm. to digest and understand even though they may they may 
seem out of place and they still can seem out of place after I've listened to it a bunch of time. I'd be like, no, this is still a bad line. You shouldn't have said it here. Should have said it elsewhere. Um, I think I'm more cri critical when it comes to other people and how they deliver their lines um, mm -hmm. and how they kind of, you know, do their thing because I'm still listening to those happen. And it's not because they're delivering in a better way that they don't seem less corny. I just feel like I just, you know, continue to listen to it to kind of make sure that I guess plenty of things I've listened to in my in my day or I was like, oh, that's a trash line. But I would still respect it because of the way he either said it or what he was kind of trying to get his point across or whatever. And it's the same thing I do with Big Sean. So when it comes to his uh, uh, quote unquote corny lines, um, they are a little bit mute point for me because I still mm. appreciate his production, his his ability to rap on the beat and then also to talk about something real. So, yeah. I'd be guessed that becomes he's, he's got better production because like he actually you know gets experienced producers to give him a good beat and I I will always give that to Big Sean because J Cole's weakest point like these beats were okay but like please can you just you know ask Kanye for a beat like, yeah he got he definitely got better but i can tell they were made by him that's all i'm saying yeah. i could tell they got made by him but he definitely has gotten better and better over time i would say with big sean's great. like personality like i think people he's he's always fit the i put him in like the same lane as fabulous where it's like you know you talk about a lot of different things like some real stuff some girls some you know flashy stuff but it's he wants to seem bigger than life and i think that image works for him but sometimes it doesn't work with if it's not consistent because like it's a bunch yeah. of rappers that have like corny lines like 21 savage everything he says is corny but <laughs> it he's consistent and it fits his style and so you get used to it whereas like two chains again he's got hella corny lines but just how he delivers it it makes it work i feel like big sean hasn't like big, I don't think Big Sean can say, um, what's his name, Twenty One Savage lines, and it sound cool. It's just I don't know what it is about how he raps or how he says it. It's just I think that it doesn't really work. Yeah, I think I Two think that get away with a lot of stuff because you can't even Two Chains as a rapper, you can't take him serious. Like you can take him serious, but you can't take him serious. He his persona don't. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Yeah, his mannerisms and everything, that's kind of the 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 reason why it seems like, no, you couldn't pull that off. Like, he could never pull off any, like, gangster music to me. Because he, and even when he tried, like, no, stop. Mm -hmm. You could just talk about stuff you're actually relevant on. Like, relationships, talk about business, talk about something that you understand. Like, you can understand this stuff. Understanding having a struggle, that's totally fine. But no gangster stuff. When you start talking about that, I'm like, no, not you. I can tell. I understand. You you can definitely be a part of that. He's like he's like me. Like we're very close to that type of life, but we not a part of that life, and we nowhere near ready or bound to do that. So it's like you know it's something like you know that you know that type of person. So yeah, I can respect him when he's talking about that subject in a way of showing as, as like a bird's eye view of him looking to that and seeing it from for his own eyes and seeing stuff like that but for him to say he's been doing it that's why like where delivery and stuff comes in two chains he could say garbage lines and they could be real because you don't really know his personification is not present all you know is that he's two chains and he's done a lot of stuff in his past life and he and he's been talking about the same stuff for forever I think the I think where Big Sean kind of started off and went wrong is where he came in as like a pop star, kind of came in like a mm -hmm. a rapper that wasn't really a rapper. He was really good at he was like he he had the he had the Kanye effect. Kanye made him bigger than life in a different way, and then when he tried to just minimize that to come back to a reality of you know utilizing his upbringing to really make good songs. No, it never resonated with anyone because they was like, well, you use the same guy that was doing I'm big, you know, stuff like that. So it's not like you really can switch 
does flip and then like people start respecting that type of level of creativity from you. Mm-hmm. But I listen and I let gave him that benefit of the doubt. And that's probably why I'd be so, you know, like he makes the same music. He makes similar music. Yes, he has to put in that production style to it because that's what he is. That's what he did. That's what he can do. He knows how to do it well. I mean, a lot of his songs are as strong in that sense, but he still makes the same type of music that is impo- impactful, important, and it has meaning behind. So, and that's a, that's where I leave it because we run out of time anyway. I got a quick but, question though. Does Big? I know most people don't really do it nowadays, but does Big Sean do like mixtapes or just like short group of songs? Um, say that again. Does Big Sean do like? mixtapes or just you know short albums uh he does um he does mixtapes he does mixtapes yeah no, I, I was just gonna say because like some artists like they might not have good albums like again i would say like fabulous i don't really care about any of his albums but uh-huh. people respect him for showing his you know rapping abilities on mixtapes where you just take any beat you know just rap and people really like that type of stuff and i think i don't he did double or nothing with metro Boomin, and that was like uh he did like uh 12 albums on where he was just flowing it yeah and again it's because where again (laughs) i like big sean and i like his music so there's plenty of songs out there that I've went and searched for and I found that I was like, this is a really dope song. This is a really dope song. This is, this is meaningful in that way. People don't do that with people they don't care about. So it's not like he doesn't have that catalog out there to be, to be discovered. It's not like you're going to give him that benefit of the doubt because you don't like how he delivers those said lines or you don't like how he presents himself to the world anyway. So it's not like that benefit of doubt is there to be, to be, to provide, not saying you just saying people in general. Cause that's, that's the, that's the sentiment that I get from a lot of people is that he's just too corny. I'm not going to listen to him. So, um, if that has always been that way, but he has the catalog out there for people to go listen to if you want to listen to it. Yeah. No, I think that's, I was just going to say, like, a lot of artists in that situation where they're, people don't give them as much respect just from their rapping ability or whatever. It's just, yeah. like, mixtapes and features. Like, really just getting yourself out there and getting people to notice you as not just some throwaway rapper. And I'm not saying that Big Sean hasn't done the work. It's just the more that he's featured on, you know, he's on the song with J. Cole, he's on the song with Jay-Z, doing, you know, getting that attention to him that's really where people start to get interested in him like i don't think yeah. j cole is the best rapper but as long as he stays relevant and people can continuously talk about j cole then he's always going to stay relevant he needs to separate himself from travis jack harlow like he he don't need to do music with them he needs to do music even on his own or he's just uh, barring it up because yeah. i don't think I think the I think he has to sell himself as a pop star still. And that's what's disappointing because he doesn't get the ability to kind of go away and just make a good body of music like J. Cole and Kendrick because those people don't have to sell to a, a record label. They don't have to sell their music. They can make it how they want and put it out. The fact that Big Sean is still doing songs with Jack, still doing have to have a Travis song on his album, it, it tell it's telling. It's telling that he has to do that because I don't think that he gets the respect enough to put out an album that he just wants to put out. And even if he does, this 21 album, like Detroit 2, yeah, he put a lot of songs on there. Yes, it's a lot of songs that could be, could, could not, didn't have to be on there and stuff like that. But I feel like there's a, there's an underlining reason on why his, why he, why he has that type of thing. Like, if you listen to Detroit and you listen to Detroit 2, obviously there was something behind Detroit 2 that you could have probably 
understand why it was 21 songs versus how Detroit was a mixtape and how it was kind of a collective of songs that were just really good. It was just, and, and that was it. And that was kind of like, like that body of work. It was fine. But you can tell that he steals, he pitches himself. That's what he does. He has to. He has to still fit that mode of I have to pitch these songs to make these songs on the back end. But ain't nobody going to list to those back end songs because this is what you have to present every time. So if you're constantly presenting, like, I'm, I'm, I appreciate it. He did deep reverence because that kind of showed his rapping ability and didn't show him just trying to go poppy with his single. But you can tell he probably had to fight for deep reverence to probably be the one. It's, it, it's, it's stuff like that. That's kind of like, yeah, you, you, you're good, but you're not J Cole Kendrick good. So you don't have the ability to kind of go off and do your own thing completely. Yeah. So I don't think he, uh, he can do that stuff easily. And I think the ones that he did do when it kind of like that, they didn't sell well. So I don't know if we we'll ever see a 10 track album with him, Metro and him. And they just kind of just bar for bar, go, go for something like that. That's what it was. So, uh, but yeah, that's pretty much it. You know, um, I'm going to cut it off here because we over time, but um, we'll talk about Apex the next next week and uh, kind of go over everything there. Uh, but anything else, anything we all want to mention before we dip up out of here? Um, I ain't got nothing. No. Stay safe. I mean, wear your yeah. mask if you can. <laughs> Wear that mask. Yeah, stay safe. It's real reckless out here. Um, go listen to J. Cole. We're trying to get him to 400,000. Um, I think, I think, I think he deserves, like I said, I feel like all of them deserve to sell that amount of amount, period. I think yeah. they all have like the level, they have the creativity, they have the ability to do that. So I don't think that, that nobody should be slighted or feel slighted because they have so less. I just think they all should be on that same level of respect and cadence. It's in my opinion. I don't know. May, the world may not feel that way, but I just feel that way. But definitely respecting J. Cole. I respect his music. I love his music, so don't get it twisted. Um, but that's pretty much it. Thank you guys for listening. As always, it's a bi-weekly podcast where we're supposed to be talking about gaming, but we talked about other stuff today, which is fine. Don't worry about it. We get back to the gaming uh, strictly uh, at another time. But thanks for listening, and we'll talk to you guys next time. Peace.